Well, that is about as intense of a 30 minutes as you'll ever spend watching television. My goodness. Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you'll be among the first to know. The fifth episode of Who's the Patient Has Aired is called Pasticcio, which is a type of dish uh, from Greek culture that will come back to bite us all in the ass as this episode comes to a conclusion. I can't be sure, can't be positive. I think this is the first episode that doesn't have Alan as the opener. Like, I think we've always opened up on Alan, so this is the first time we open up on Sam. And so this picks up right after the last episode. Sam is on his way to go see uh, his ex, Mary, based on Alan's suggestion. Like, hey, you might divert your energy and your attention and, and get some of the happy moments back in your life by going to go see Mary. And so he does. Uh, normally, when someone is driving to go see somebody that they care about or they've loved and they're playing, like, their favorite musician like he's got Kenny Chesney blaring I'm assuming I don't know Kenny's catalog well enough but I'm assuming based on what he said and who he is that's Kenny Chesney playing uh normally when you're playing a song like that and you're gonna see somebody you love you just sing along with it he is still very rigid still very intense whatever how whatever feelings he is still holding for Elias back at back at home he's still feeling it as he drives and then he goes and sees Mary and uh I Cannot say that I have not seen a more awkward conversation between two people who used to at some point in time Give a damn about each other in my entire life. It is weird and awkward um, And very stilted She doesn't quite understand She's like, oh, you're in therapy. Cool. But she doesn't quite understand why um, He's there <laughs> He doesn't really bring it up. They have some very long gaps between their conversations and what they're saying what we do learn is that they do have a kid together, what is initially thought to be a child that they have together, but the kid's not around. There's nothing in the house that seems to be kid-like or that there's a kid around. She mentions that their kid that they have together, Hara, or Hera, I believe, uh, is doing well, is running, likes to run, and then she's gotten another kid. When she says she's gotten another kid, that leads me to believe like, oh, they've got like an adoption make-a-wish thing in another country that they sort of adopt a kid and then send them money, that type of situation. They don't actually have a kid that is present in their home together. Um, which is probably for the best, because they are both awkward. They bring up Kenny Chesney, she's like, have you gone? Like, I haven't. She knows that that's one of his bright spots. The biggest takeaway from this scene, though, is that while uh, Candace, Sam's mom, is fully aware that her son is a killer, uh, Mary was not. Mary was very much not aware. She knows that like there's something disconnected between them in the relationship. But doesn't quite know that he is, is that. So she's not sure why. He's like, oh, you're in therapy? All right, cool. I guess you need therapy. Not, it's, it's not clear for them. But they keep having this very stilted conversation that for a moment she seems like she's happy to see Sam. And then after a while she's like, I don't know what we have to talk about. And so she brings up the chair. that She's like, your love chair is still here. Yeah, your client you left it. And they drag it to the car. And... Uh, and that's sort of her way of getting him out, and that's sort of the way to end this conversation, uh, this very awkward and uncomfortable conversation. While he's off with Mary, Elias and Alan are sort of having a heart-to-heart, -heart. Um, and in that, Elias is kind of like, hey, look, you said you had your hands free, right? And you say that uh, you're his therapist and you had these sessions, and like, he's like, yeah. Cool, how about we try this? And this is like Elias' last ditch effort. Like, he's like, we're both going to die here. Nothing, this isn't going to go well for either of us. But let's go down swinging. That's his, that's his way of thinking. Like, let's go out with a bang. Let's go out swinging. So he suggests, he suggests to Alan, invite me to one of these therapy sessions. Um, do it in your therapy way, however you have to do it. Trick the brain, trick him to believe so that I need to be present. Do so. And then when we have them, your hands are free. You choke them down and I'll throw my body on them and we'll we'll try to at least go out with a with a bang and see if we can get out of and get out of this. Alan's processing it, but he's not really like no, I don't think that's the I don't think that's the way to go. Uh we'll get out of this. And in that, Alan then starts talking about, hey, 
when, when Elias mentions to him, like, hey, we're both going to die, Alan's like, I need you to do me a favor. While I am, I've taken this note in case you die, I have this note for you of who I need to let know and, and say your your best wishes to. I need you to let my wife, I mean, my, my daughter know that I love her um, and that she will get through this and let my son know that I love him too. And even though that they are very disconnected, they were very disconnected in her death and when she was sick, his mother loved her as well. We later get a flash sequence that shows how close they were. When he was a little boy, she was fully on, he was fully on into, into her life. And we start hearing a bit of more of a connection that they had um, and how he lost Ezra, uh, as he feels. He, he mentions that at some point in time in college, um, he ran into the Jews, the Orthodox Jews uh, at college and sort of has just changed his complete life. And everything sort of changed his life. And that sort of bucked, that just rubbed his wife the wrong way. Sort of just bucked the system. He didn't know how to deal. It was like they got kosher food, but the only difference between kosher food and regular food is that it's regular food with a thousand rules. Uh, and so he kind of just like, we split apart. I lost my boy then. So if you could let him know that... Um, that he is special and that I miss him. And as he starts to go more into it, you know who comes back. Um, and Alan screams to, to, to Elias like he's back. And so the conversation that they are having has to end. And um, <laughs> we see Sam dragging in his chair, his chair that he just got back. Uh, and he uses that now as his therapy session. Now what's fascinating in this is that as soon as he drags the chair in, he sits down, He's ready to have his session because Alan comes in. Alan is ready the second he walks through that door. Like, all right, I'm in session mode. We got to bring this back and kind of calm it down because I don't know. I don't know how that really that conversation went. I don't know if it went good or bad, but I know he's going to need to talk to somebody no matter what. It's interesting that in that um, Sam's specificness and OCD ishness. Um, he has to clean the bag off. He has to like line up the, the tissue paper perfectly before he can actually have the one-on-one -on -one with, with Alan. He, he begins talking and Alan's like, oh, how did it go? Um, or, or what did you guys talk about? And he's like, yeah, you know, I've got a kid. Um, he's talking about Kenny a little bit. Uh, I don't think the, what you wanted, I liked it. I liked talking to her, but I don't think what you wanted, the divergent of my feelings occurred like I, I didn't divert my feelings enough from that to that and then Alan starts talking about the kids because he mentioned um that they're kids that they adopted from Bangladesh which is where we learn that full on that they are kids from Bangladesh um Alan starts broaching that because who can talk bad or like whenever you hear the, the thought of kids you get happy generally <laughs> um and not not for Sam, uh, because Sam then starts talking about what if I have the urges and, 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 and to kill and, and basically murder the kids? Uh, how would that how would that be? And Alan's like, whoa, this is taking a turn. Then Sam starts getting up, freaking out and pacing. He's like, I need to, I, I got to, I got to, I got to do this now. I'm going to do this now. And he takes the key and opens the door. This scene feels intense. It's like five thousand, um, because Alan, because Sam's running towards the door to go kill Elias, and then Alan starts screaming to holy heavens, like, "Get down here!" Tell to uh, Sam's brown, like, "Hey, get down here! Get down here! Um, we have a problem. We have a problem." Uh, and so it sort of culminates with Alan about to attack Elias and Candace uh, demonstrating her authority and and getting his attention. She. He's in a trance, and he's, she does this thing where she's talking to him at first, and then she just claps her hand like three times like a parent trying to get your kid's attention. Um, and Alan swings around with, like, tears in his eyes, like, just stuck in his eyes. Um, and he listens, which seems to be the only way that he's actually ever listened when in, this, in that enraged of a state, um, that is what he listens to. When she feels like she's gotten his attention and gotten her stop, she just calmly goes back upstairs, which the way that she walks upstairs is just weird and odd and uh, I may be leading more into it. I may want it so much to be mom or have her have her something more to do with it, but that's kind of where we lead to. Sam closes the door on Elias and uh, then goes to his room, which his room, I've always thought his room was upstairs, like mom's is only up, upstairs. We now get a better, a better layout that um, Sam's room is directly next to Alan 
where Alan's bed is, Sam's room, his little off in that little basement area. So he goes to his room um, and starts blaring, blaring some more Kenny Chesney, I'm assuming. You guys are going to have to help me. I don't know his catalog. Um, to sort of soothe himself, to sort of calm. Um, he's blaring Kenny Chesney at the top. Uh, top of his lungs, or top of her, or the sound he can, is blaring through the house. And then he's also um, looking up stuff on the internet. This, the one thing that sort of seems to calm him down is that there's a Kenny Chesney uh, chat room talking about concerts and who went where. And I went to Reno. He does that. That calms down. He then uh, searches porn, which is another stress reliever, I would imagine, for him. What's well, interesting, and I don't know if this was done on purpose because they, they specifically show frames of what is on the main page which typically if you log in to one of those type of sites it's going off of the algorithms of what you normally or normally watch he had something in regards to uh stepmother or stepson porn and he had something in, in regards to neighbor coming to take wife type of porn don't know if it plays into anything could be something that was the impetus of what started the situation with his, his father and his, and his mother but I feel like everything that happens in the show is very purposeful, and I feel like they don't zoom in on those two frames before he searches big tits um, to kind of hit home a point. Um, if whether it's an Oedipus complex point, I, who knows? But whether he was into his mom, who, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but those are some type of words and triggers that I think they were purposely putting in front of us. Uh, he wakes up the next day and is no better. <laughs> Um, he, Alan wants to have another conversation with him. It feels like Alan overnight sort of thought more about what Elias had said. And so Alan does this long, intense, uh, walk down the street in therapy terms to get him to feel comfortable enough to allow Elias out and into a session. And how he does it, he's basically like, hey, I don't think... Anything that you've said, you've told me that you, people upset you or they're rude to you, but I don't think that's the case. I think you had a violent moment with your dad when you were young and how your dad didn't have a real reason for you. You don't have a real reason for anyone else. You just act out to whomever is around when you get that tendency to be violent. And so I don't think you have anything directly against Elias. I just think you, he was in there at the moment. I think once you realize that Elias is a human being or a real person, you won't have the urge so much to kill him. So I'm suggesting you bring him out and we have a session together. And one of the first things that Sam says is like, hey, well, hold on, these are my sessions. And I was like, no, these are still sessions for you, for you. This therapy is for you to help you, like to bring him in is to help you. Reluctantly, Sam goes and, and drags him out and puts him in a chair and sits him down. So they have like a little triangle session of this. And Alan's main goal in this is to uh, humanize Elias. Now, I remind you, Elias's thought was, hey, if you get me out here and your hands are free, let's attack. Alan is sort of going halfway there. He's doing a half measure. He's not going the full way. Um, he's gotten him out here, but now he's trying to, like, I'm going to do it my way to sort of diffuse the situation. And in that, he's like, hey, tell him about your family or tell him about some, some you. Who are you? And it's hard for him to sort of speak. He's nervous. It's difficult. Alan even says it to him like, hey, I know this is hard. I know this is an unorthodox way of doing this. Tell him about, uh, and he's like, well, tell him about the dish, the pasticcio. Tell him about that. Um, and he starts to. But as he starts to, Sam starts getting even more agitated and more angry and freaking out. It's like, no, mm -mm, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't want like they, whatever he was feeling now that he can hear his voice and it's, it's triggering to him. And then Sam attacks Elias and, uh, starts to choke him and Elias can't, his hands are bound. So he can't like do anything to really fight it off. Um, and he's straddling him. So he's choking him and there's no movement. And Alan is freaking out, screaming. He's screaming for Candace, who's not coming down. Um, Alan, Steve Carell is killing it. He's killing it in this entire series, but this episode was phenomenal. Because um, you can, you're trying to see how he is trying to maneuver around this. And in that freak out, when he's watching someone be murdered in front of him, and he just realizes that halfway through that, there's nothing he can do. Like, it's, it's out of his hands. And you see a shot 
shot is stunning. Um, but you see a foreground shot of Alan at the bed clutching it, screaming, screaming till he can't. Basically, the life that is um, being taken from Elias is also being taken from Alan at the same time. They almost go quiet around the same time. But there's so much life and fight and vigor until there isn't. And so even though Sam's not choking Alan, in a way he is. And you see the two of them... You see the foreground of Alan. You see the, the uh, background of Elias' movement stopping. We do get a shot in, in this of Candace um, in her bed clutching. She can hear everything, and she's shaking. Which is interesting, because uh, I've always said that the mom has something to do with this, and she still might, but it might be now, based on the type of porn that he's watching, and whatnot, it may be more of a, she may be less of a initiator and more of a like, hey, listen to me, or hey, you're doing this because of me type of thing, as opposed to being someone who's actually actively doing it. Um, the mom still has something to do with it, but I don't quite think it's uh, being the person, obviously, it's not the person who's murdering anymore, uh, or, or was, but she may be sort of the reason that some of this becomes to light. And it may be some of the urges that he has towards her. Because there just seemed to be no chemistry that he had with Mary. So maybe that chemistry has gone, was actually towards his his, his mother. Um, just spitballing. I don't know. He goes back to his room. Um, Alan is there, just stuck in, in, in sadness and despair. Uh, we go back to the room and see Sam, what looks to be a trophy box or a trophy room of sorts. He has taken the wallets of everybody that he has sort of killed. And it's quite, or, or, or watches. There's some other trinkets in there too. And he takes them out and he's kind of just like admiring them. Um, it is weird. It's confusing. I don't quite know. I can't make this out so much because Don Hall is doing a fantastic job of being very indescript <laughs> in, in this. But he pulls out three of them specifically and lays them out. But there's, I don't get a rhyme or reason yet. I don't know if those mean more to him than others. Um, but I do think whatever those might be the original three or the, the first three that he, 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 first three kills that he got. But he sits there and sort of just thinks about what he does. And in our final shot, we go back to Alan and the look of just defeat and despair. And now probably the, the, the washing over of him of he's probably not going to make it out of this alive. Um, and that the one moment that he had to sort of fight back, he didn't. Like Elijah's idea was to, hey, bring me out here and let's attack. He brought him out there, but didn't fall through all the way. And I feel like that's going to come, come back to bite Alan and maybe make him feel the type of way. Like I didn't do... All, I didn't see through all the way that this was supposed to be a seen through, seen through, and now I'm kind of out here on my on an island by myself because Candace comes when she wants, and I don't know what to do next. This was a powerful and gripping episode, and I think it's I think it is important that at the halfway mark, at some point in time, we did need to see quote unquote Sam's dark passenger, like we needed to actually see him kill um, to to let us know how high the stakes are because before it becomes all talking like maybe he will maybe he won't what's the mom um but now it actually feels real and like alan's in a lot of danger and alan needs to get out of there uh and i don't and i don't think the one person that he's trying to count on in candace she does not feel like a reliable person to count on there's something something to her and something to the power for which she went down there to say no stop and then the weakness she showed in the moment that he actually was doing it, um, that's an interesting twist, an interesting play. Um, but I do think that the 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 porn that is on the front was on the front page of uh, of Sam's algorithms <laughs> plays a bit of part into a bigger part into who he is and his actual relationship with his mom and where that may lead. What did you guys think about this episode? Uh, powerful stuff. Steve Carell, if he doesn't get like one of those miniseries Emmys, shame on them. <laughs> because my God, he's doing some fantastic work here. I love this episode. It is, I, it's hard to say it's my favorite because they, I feel like they are all attached to each other. But this is like that perfect mid-piece 
to kind of take us back down whatever road we're going to in the back end. Uh, but what did you guys think? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDigit at gmail.com. We also have a podcast by the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours. <laughs>